Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week four lecture, sorry, week five, lecture four. In this week, we are going to look at raster data sets. And in the past lectures, we have looked at the different types of data and how raster is different from vector and where raster data can be used for rural development. <coughs> In addition, we also looked at the aspects where raster data can be used and a lot of errors and issues that can creep into the raster data set. These can be effectively removed through the system by using GIS tools and algorithms to filter the data. Given that, let us look at some tools for raster analysis in today's lecture. So, as we have seen in the GIS portal and the GIS dashboard, there are a lot of data sets available, which are raster that can be used for learning. But most importantly, there are set of raster tools that are always on the toolbar. <laughs> this is what we will look first in today's lecture. We also looked at how do you understand the tool by using the help bar. We will also showcase each tool which is dominant for rural development cases of the tools that are listed today. So if you see here in the raster window, you do see that there are a lot of tools and in the tools we have multiple analysis tools, projection tools, miscellaneous tools, but not all are priority level high in rural development. We will only focus on certain tools that will be used in the following case studies. Let's look at some of the tools today. But before that, please uh, spend some time using the software, going through the help command as I showed you in the previous lecture and studying about each tool. Normally one tool can be discussed in one lecture, but we will go through four tools because I have given you how to read and assess these tool sets. The first tool we will be looking at is the raster calculator. Before that, I'll again show you how to look at the toolbar. So you have the GIS open blank window, uh, an empty project. And in that project, you have raster. Just click on uh, the raster uh, toolbar on the top. And then if you come down, there are multiple data sets. And these data sets are important for tool sets. These tool sets are important for our particular rural development cases, of which we will look at some specific cases in the later sections. Here, what you see here is, and as an example, we can click one and then the help command I have shown uh, how to use the help command. Okay, So this is where you will be losing. There is a database manager if you have a database. Um, and then there are a lot of data sets that you use, you add using the add raster layer button. So the add raster layer button is also on the toolbar. It is below the main toolbar uh, and it can add rasters, add mesh layer or even create new raster sets. What we will be doing now is, let us uh, go one by one uh, in today's lecture and see some uh, of the data sets 
uh, tool sets that we'll be using. So let us, let us go back to the uh, presentation window that we have, wherein we have the PowerPoint presentation. The first data tool set is the raster calculator. As the name suggests, this is a calculator that is used to calculate using raster as a object. So in a normal calculator, what do you use? You use numbers, right? So five plus four is equal to nine. Here, five is an object, four is an object, plus is an operator. You use the operator and then you make the result. In, in a raster calculator, instead of numbers you use the raster itself so a raster plus b raster is equal to c raster okay the plus is the operator as you could see here there is a, a column of operators the pointer so you can see that there is a, a lot of operators and you have the bands that can come in here you can add subtract each band as needed uh, I will not show uh, examples because that takes time to run and stuff. We will just introduce the tools. We will have a hands-on tool display in the following lectures. So what does this tool do? Uh, so before that, a small hint uh, for those who are learning softwares. You can use a book or a tutorial to learn software by keying in specific specific steps. You can also learn it by just playing with the software, like just adding two layers, subtracting two layers, etc. Okay, these are not coded heavily. You already have the codes uh, embedded in the system. All you have to do is bring the objects, use the operators, and then get the output. The output, output can be stored in the computer or you could store it as a uh, fly data on your model. So let's look at the first aspect. The raster calculator, uh, it is um, uh, in the raster menu, as you could see, uh, and allows you to perform calculations on the basis of existing raster pixel values. So when I said A plus B is equal to C, uh, let us draw this function. So A raster is having four pixels. Okay, let's say the values are one, two, three, and four. Whereas your B raster can have, I have to change the color. So let's change it to orange. Assuming these are all equal size, okay? And this is two, one, four, and three. Any values can be there, but just we're using it. And the operator is plus, okay? So now what will happen is the resultant pixel value would be only calculated based on the same pixel location. For example, one and two are in the same location. So one plus two is three. So this will take three. Two plus one is three. Okay. Three plus four is seven. And four plus three is seven. So now we have added two layers based on the numbers uh, that are interchanged. and um, uh, But in a pixel, which is same as the other pixel. So two layers are there. This pixel and this pixel are the same location but different values and the values we are adding so the resultant is what comes here in the output layer as and the format is geotiff uh, so the two layers can come here and you have an operator which is plus uh, the operators can be complex by using an equation such as a plus b plus c is equal to d okay so we don't have to um, keep it simple we can also make it complex by putting in brackets uh, divisions, multiplications, anything, right? So please understand that depending on the model and um, uh, the data set that you use, uh, you can have it much complex or very simple formula. And also the Excel, the value of the pixel need not be just multiplied with another pixel. 
you can have one common value denominator applied across. Okay. So, for example, in the previous uh, model, you had, let me draw it again, a different example. Okay. In this uh, box, you have one, two, three, four. So in this raster, you had four pixels, values one, two, three, four. Now this can also be multiplied by a common denominator, which is three. Any value can be used. Okay. So just example I'm giving. So the resultant would be three times one is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine, four times three is 12. So now you could see that a simple raster calculator can be used to multiply rasters uh, between the rasters or just one common value and multiply the rasters. Where this would be important, that is in rural development cases, we will discuss that in the case study scenario. So moving on, these are just the introduction of the uh, raster tools. Then we have uh, an example given in the manual itself, convert elevation values from meters to feet. We know that from meters to feet, uh, we need to multiply it by 3.28. So the equation that comes in the uh, raster calculator equation box is elevation, which is the raster band, times 3.28. So elevation at one is the raster name, the name of the raster. That times 3.28 gives you the meters to feet conversion. Okay. So this is very, very important for doing multiple uh, values and changing the values into uh, different, different um, aspects. Because uh, what happens is uh, normally we get data in a particular unit. As I said in the initial part of the rural uh, development uh, cases, uh, we will get in a different different units. However, we will have to make it in a same scenario. And that same scenario is only possible if we use, excuse me, um, if we use uh, a particular unit, okay? So the unit is important, right? And we will have to apply the same unit across. We cannot, we cannot um, have multiple different uh, uh, units uh, and then crash the model. You need to have the unit and that normalization happens by multiplying a common value to convert one unit to the other. All units can be made as the same unit by uh, using arithmetic uh, operations. Okay. Good. So moving on, we will now look at uh, how the tool is in the GIS portal. Let me open it. Okay. So we are here uh, in the GIS portal. We can definitely um, open the raster calculator. Uh, as I said, the raster bands, the input bands would come here. Uh, you can create the on the fly of the raster, or you can do output layer where you want to store. All these were discussed in the previous class. Uh, and if you need a help, just click the help bar. Uh, it will go into a new tab, uh, which will open now. Let's see where it's opening. Okay. Uh, and I will to share. Okay, so now you could see that uh, the raster calculator help tool has come up uh, and you can use it along where you will have to. So they also give you some data to play with and examples uh, using a mask, how you can do uh, classifying a raster, the multiple, multiple aspects, uh, algorithms that could, you can use. And the forum will help you definitely for understanding where the raster is. <coughs> Okay, so moving on, um, let's go back to our presentation.
So the next uh, tool we'll be looking at today is the raster alignment. Okay, what is what is special about this? So you could see that it looks like raster layers to align. Um, so you may have different rasters present in the data uh, format or for your rural uh, development the objective let's say you're doing a agricultural based assessment you need rainfall soil type crop type um, groundwater levels etc as rasters so all need to be aligned so what do you mean align is you each one could be in a different projection so let's first define what we are going to do in the uh, raster alignment merge several rasters as input and align them perfectly so one raster could be here, one raster could be here, because this is using a different coordinate system uh, and a reference system. And if you bring it together, this is this. For example, if for this, this is a zero. For this raster, this is a zero. We're going to merge the zeros together and then align them so that all rasters can be used for the same location. Reproject to the same coordinate reference system, CRS, because as I said, a satellite can take in a different coordinate system. Um, it need not coincide with the same coordinate system that this satellite is using. Then resample to the same cell size and offset in the grid. Each raster has a pixel value, right? There is a value, but I also said there is a spatial res resolution. For example, this raster, raster one, has a cell size of 100 by 100 kilometer, like this. Whereas the um, Landsat data can have a 30 by 30 meter resolution. How do you merge them? How do you bring them to the same panel? That is by doing resampling. Okay, resample is a good tool for rural development where you have multiple data sets in different different uh, cell size but you can bring them to a same level, same cell size uh, by using the align tool. So you could see here, there is a button called CRS. What do you want to do with the, with the layer? That's what it's asking. Uh, let me bring my pointer. So it says uh, you put all the input layers here. Then what you do is you can create a reference layer or you can say that bring them all to the same CRS wherein they are scattered. Now bring them all to the same uh, coordinate reference system so that they can align each other. For example, Chennai here in one coordinate system is far away or compared to another coordinate system or the size of Chennai is, is different here and there because of the coordinate reference system. However, we know in reality, there's only one Chennai location. So for that Chennai location, you're going to bring all the layers together so that they merge. Once they merge, you can do calculations on them. So the raster calculator can come after you align the rasters. So the first part here is you will be looking at resample to the sample same size, cell size and offset in the grid. So here's where you have the cell size and grid offset. So the cell size is very important. You can give a numeric value for the cell size for the X and Y so that you have the same cell size across. You can also do a clip to a region of interest. Uh, let's say, for example, you are downloading data. The, the data I download is uh, for the India scale. Uh, you cannot download the India scale or use the India study scale for a small district, let's say Pune. So for Pune, you need to remove all the other data which is too heavy on the system and on the database uh, and only use the Pune district data. So for that, uh, you need to clip. Clip is a tool that we're going to see uh, where you have the entire data set, but you only take one data set that you want um, uh, for the region and the others are thrown away. Uh, though, uh, those are discarded because we don't want to use them, we're not going to use them. So just use a clip to a region of interest. Rescale values when required, as we showed in the previous uh, example. Uh, suppose uh, one is in a, in a different unit uh, and the other is in a different unit. You can rescale so you know how this, the cell size can be changed. If the cell size can be changed, you can also scale scale up and down the values when required. So kind of multiplying with one uh, on the other. 
So let's look at how this tool um, um, is on the platform. So you can see here, I'm going to close this, uh, use raster, and then where do you find it? It's here. You don't have a thumbnail like you have for raster calculator and georeferencer, but we'll use it. Uh, georeferencer is very important. We will use it extensively in one week. Uh, I'll show you why it's very important for rural development, um, especially the maps are outdated. We will update those maps. Okay, so align raster is this. You can add data, subtract the data based on um, your, your interest. Since we don't have any layers here, it is not showing as uh, positive. Um, but once you add it, then it will auto-populate with the raster image. Okay, so what, what happens here is you uh, have an opportunity to look at different data sets and uh, make them in a same singular fashion, right? Uh, this is this is important uh, because sometimes what happens is uh, we tend to uh, have only one estimate of the data, right? We don't use uh, multiple data sets or we don't see multiple data sets uh, for a single uh, property, let's say groundwater. Uh, we only look at groundwater. However, we know that groundwater can be a function of rainfall, land use, crop type, etc. So in that case, what we have to do is uh, we'll have to merge uh, some understanding from the other uh, data sets so that we have an overall picture, right? So let's see um, in general terms uh, how a data set can look like in, in a real time world. Right. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to share the screen with uh, some data that I have downloaded. Uh, you can see here there are there is a data set for I just added these data. Okay. So you have time bands. We can remove that. Right click, remove the layer. So it's okay. Um, and then you have soil moisture. So basically what layers have I added? I've added soil moisture from zero to 10 centimeters, 10 to 40 centimeters, 100 to 20, 200 centimeters. And then uh, there's another as 40 to 100. So 40 to 100 comes here. So basically from zero to 200 centimeters, you can assess the soil mo moisture. Why is this important? When you are growing crops, you need to understand how much water is there in the soil. If the soil level is less, uh, water level is less, you will have to supply more water, right? So it is very important for agricultural water management, rural infrastructures to know what is the status of soil moisture. Okay, so we'll also remove the other layers for now. Let's just keep uh, these layers, okay? Uh, and as I said, let's first look at raster calculator. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm going to add, okay, I need the net net soil moisture, which is available across the uh, region. Let's, let's zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in to Tamil Nadu region, okay? Uh, you can relabel it as 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, but uh, yeah, let's do that so that we can have, we can have quickly one, one underscore zero to 10 and then we have 10 to 40 right and then we have 10 to 40 and then we have 40 to 100 and then let's pull it up one two three and then four just for our additions i'm, I'm going to show OK, so now uh, all these layers are there. As anyone who knows GIS have been using, you know that the top layer is what is visible. If you remove it, the, the coloring changes. If you remove it again, um, again, and again, so all the maps are gone, right? So uh, I can have all the layers turned on. And I have clicked the raster, raster calculator. 
for the first example, let us, uh, uh, one, two, three, four is there. So I'm going to click one. So one, if I double click, it populates the raster calculation expression. Then I said, I'm going to add, I'm going to add to say, so, so that the output layer is going to be called soil moisture. Always use underscores for names. Space is not uh, a good way of naming in GIS. Okay, zero to 400 centimeters, 200 centimeters. Okay. Use selected layer extend. So this is the whole globe. So let, let us use the whole globe. Uh, you could see I'm only focusing here, but we can remove that later. So number one plus zero to 10 plus 10 to 20, 10 to 40. So I'm going to click and double click. It comes. So if you double click, the equation uh, already comes. The variable comes in with the double quotations and stuff. So the name is big. That's why you see the whole name. Otherwise, uh, you can just have a simple name for it. Then you're going to add again. So you're going to add, you can put three, uh, and then you're going to add again and say four. Okay. So now you have one, two, three, four plus. Okay. Is the expression valid? Yes, it says the expression is valid. The total soil moisture is zero to 200 centimeters. Uh, and projection, don't worry about it now. You can keep um, the one which is there uh, on the projection. Say OK, and it is populated. So how do we know uh, how we have done? We can use this uh, click uh, button, the identify button, uh, and you can click one pixel, just one pixel. Uh, and that one pixel I clicked uh, has a value. So that value is going to be extracted now in the right-hand corner. If you click the right-hand corner, okay, you can see the values of band one, which is, uh, what it does it say? It's 22 uh, point. Uh, so the decimals just leave it for now. It's a long number, okay? So one, two, three, you have a uh, band is 159 and then four is 300. So 315, we're just going to do an average, uh, 315, or we can use the calculator also. Um, let's use the calculator. Okay, uh, looks like my calculator is not coming on the screen, but I'll keep it on the side. So I'm just going to add 22 uh, plus, uh, the next value is 78 plus, one five nine plus uh, three one five. Just neglecting the uh, decimals for now for time consideration. So it's around five seventy four. Around five seventy four is the total. So what are we getting here? So this same pixel should have the same number. So exactly five seventy four, five seventy five, seventy six is because of the decimals. So you see how we have summed four rasters into one, and now we have labeled it as zero to four hundred centimeters. Okay, so that is how you would be using the raster calculator. You can multiply, subtract, add, <laughs> add uh, variables, etc. So you could see visibly 22.7, 78.6, 159.7, 315.1. Add all of that, that is 576. Good. So let me remove the total moisture now. I don't want it. So let me remove it. Okay. So this is one tool that we have seen today. The other tool is the align rasters. Um, and then, as I said, you could uh, align all of them into the same. Now, if you click the plus button, you could see that, oh, okay, this can come. Uh, do you want to rescale the values or just add the values? We just say add. So there you go, you got added. So just click on add. I want a second. So just input layer because input is already here. Uh, you can just click input layer number two, it will input number three. Just go and do that for all the four, and then you can okay. so now rast rast layers to align. E eventually, all are aligned in the same coordinate size, uh, and the cell size is also going to be the same. How do you know? Uh, you can use a scale. So the scale tool is there. Just click. Let's say okay or add aligned rasters to the canvas. So if, if it is already aligned, it, it cannot be aligned again, right? So cell size is also the same, uh, but we're going to change the cell size to, uh, now it's 1.00. Uh, 0. So let's say I'm going to change it to 0. 0.5. Also can be done 0. 0.5. 
So this is how you could uh, click what you want to change. Or let's say I'm going to change all of them to a different coordinate system. Okay, so you can say uh, different coordinate system. There are multiple coordinate systems. Uh, let's say Larissa and say, okay. Uh, so all of this are going to be aligned to a different uh, coordinate system. Um, add aligned glasses to the map canvas. Uh, because we have already settled them in our database, we are not copied, it's not going to work. Okay, so this is how you would use aligned rasters. You would bring it to the, your map and then you would align them or change the cell size, etc. How do you know the cell size? As I said, you can use the scale button here. Click one, click two, you have in meters the value. As I said, it is one, one degree. So one degree is approximately 100 kilometers. So let's first set it in kilometers. You can zoom in to see the pixel. So this is the pixel and it's approximately 100. We have to zoom and click on the correct box. Since I'm not doing that, you have 110, but it's, it is 100, okay? So all pixels are 100 uh, by 100 kilometers. So with this, uh, I will uh, go back to the slides on doing the projection. Okay, so we'll we'll do the last tool for today, the mask tool. So what is the mask tool? The mask tool is you have an input. So I have showed you in the QGIS layer, the whole globe is there, but I'm going to only focus on India. How do I take only India out? By using a mask tool. <laughs> The mask tool will uh, do a clip function. So you have a, a whole uh, layer and then only a small cutter you'll use and take it out. And that shape, that shape you want is the mask. So you have the input layer A plus the mask layer, which is only uh, B. It could be the mask could be a raster, it could be a shape file or anything. And then the tool, what the tool will do, it will take only the output under the mask and bring it out thereby reducing the size of the data and the complexities associated. Let's look at an example. This whole raster is there, but I just want to look at this raster. So I'm going to apply a shape file. The, the mask shape file is red in color. It could be a raster or it could be a vector. Uh, here it is a vector, it is a shape file, it is a polygon. So the polygon is applied on the top extracted and put out. So th then you have the output. So how do you make a mask? Uh, that is a vector shape file that you could use. Um, uh, and the vector shape files, uh, you can create a new shape file to extract the, um, the region that you want. So normally I would create a new shape file uh, and then draw on the shape file to so, so that I could make a mask and then take it up. It's like making a cookie. So you, you roll a dough, the dough is the input layer, and then you have a cup to cut and take out the shape you want. Uh, so the cutting shape is done in a vector shape file database. So I would like you to go ahead and read some more of the documents on using the manual for raster uh, analysis. Uh, we will uh, look at this in the next lecture. With this, I would conclude today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you.